Today we celebrate the great solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, our God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, yet one God. As people of faith, as Catholics, the Holy Trinity plays a very important role in our lives. One of the parishes in our pastoral region has this very name, Holy Trinity. And today is a particular important feast for them. Today at the 1130 Mass, they'll be celebrating the confirmation, sacrament of confirmation with their young people. Then after the Mass, we're going to have a parish picnic doing social distancing and taking all the safe, proper safety pro- protocols. The Holy Trinity gets invoked at baptism. The deacon or the priest or the minister for the baptism says those words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Pouring water three times for each person of the Trinity. The Holy Trinity gets sang many times in praise in many of the hymns that we sing. Pay attention to the lyrics of the hymns, particularly towards the end of the hymn, towards the last couple verses there. Oftentimes, praise to the Trinity gets mentioned. The Holy Trinity has one simple prayer. One prayer that gets prayed so often. Prayed for many different reasons. One example that this prayer to the Trinity gets used is when a basketball player gets fouled at a crucial point of the game and is sent to the free throw line you'll often see the player pray this prayer just before he shoots those shots. Or if you're in a room full of Catholics and they're being very loud and you want them to get quiet very quickly, you might pray this prayer out loud and they'll stop what they're doing. It's one prayer that has changed many lives just by the mere fact that it was prayed. And it's a very simple prayer. Perhaps for most of us, it's probably the first prayer that we were taught. And the prayer goes like this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This prayer right here has great power. The Holy Trinity plays an important part in our lives. Yet the Holy Trinity is also complicated. I mean, how can our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all at the same time? You know, if you or I were to claim to have this this split identity, Some experts might say we have a mental problem. But with our God, we're left to scratch our heads and try to figure out how this mystery works. As the Most Holy Trinity is one of the greatest ministries of the Church, is never completely understood. At the same time, theologians throughout the history of the church have given us a number of explanations on how the Trinity works. Theologians throughout history will even expand on one person's understanding of the Trinity. And at other times, theologians will disagree with each other and point out the faults of others' views. 
Theologians will say that there's a large number of heresies you can commit when talking about the Trinity. And perhaps unintentionally I might commit one of those this weekend as I preach. As I went through seminary, I took a course on the Trinity. And in the course, I studied several documents, read many different views on the Trinity. And I passed the course. But to be honest, I found studying these do documents, they're rather difficult to read. Some of them are rather boring. As a matter of fact, as I read them, I had trouble paying attention to what I was reading, and sometimes even harder times staying awake. At the end of the day, though, I've come to this conclusion, that the important thing for us is not so much about understanding, but rather the important thing for us is about believing, having, and developing a relationship with the Holy Trinity. Sometimes I think we can get so caught up in the small details that we can lose sight of the bigger picture of what is most important. You know, I must admit, I do it from time to time as well. Probably one of the easiest examples is, is when I celebrate Mass, sometimes I can get so caught up in the minor details, and maybe even some of the bigger details as well, on what I'm supposed to be doing, and what I'm supposed to say. And sometimes, in the midst of it all, I forget to pray. Our scriptures today do not focus on the understanding of the Trinity, but rather more on the important detail of believing and having a relationship with our God. We hear in our scriptures today probably the most popular scripture verse in all of scripture. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. We are promised eternal life, not based upon what we understand, but on what we believe. It is in our belief for God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we're promised eternal life. It's in our belief that we develop a relationship with our God. And it's through this development of the relationship that we gain an understanding of who, who, what the Holy Trinity is. As we celebrate the solemnity today, Let's not focus on what we do and do not understand, but rather on what we believe and on the relationship that we can develop with our God. For it is in our amen to the body of Christ that we recommit ourselves to the relationship that we have with our God.